Okay, so what we're going to start with is we're going to start working with these four things here. So let's zoom in on our first one there at the top. And on that first one, we're just going to very simply use the line command. So we're going to go L for line. Using our O snaps, if you have quadrant turned on, you're just going to draw a line from the top quadrant of that circle to the top quadrant of that circle. Remember, if you don't have quadrant on, you come down here below, and you're going to turn quadrant on down here. Now, I have an extra thing open down here. Why is my toolbar in the wrong position? I don't know. There we go. So you're going to come down here below and turn your quadrant on here if you do not have it on. So again, on the bottom side, you're going to repeat, do the same thing, line from quadrant to quadrant. Simple enough on that first one. Now, pan up to your second one. So you're going to pan, slide the screen up a little bit. On this one, we're going to make the lines tangent. Now, you've done this before. Remember, you have to force the tangent command by going T-A-N and making it tangent. When you make it tangent, make it to this quadrant of the circle. So somewhere between here and here, click in that area of the circle. Anywhere is fine. Then you're going to go tangent to this other side. And on this one, you're going to make it somewhere in this quadrant of the circle. So look at the screen for just a moment. And tangent somewhere into this. Oh, wait. I'm lying. Not that quadrant. This quadrant over here. So this outside quadrant. It still may get you to the right point there. If you come down here, it's definitely going to be wrong. But up here in this top right quadrant. And click there. All right. One thing here to pay attention to is this. Um, one O-snap that, that you have on that's, that's kind of sometimes a mess is nearest. So I'm going to turn nearest on for a little bit. You do not need to turn nearest on. If you go alpha line, notice with the nearest O-snap on, no matter where I'm at, on the lines, the circles, the arcs, anywhere I'm at, it gives you that little symbol. It gives you the nearest symbol to whatever you're nearest to. What you can do is you can easily make mistakes with the nearest on. You think, oh, I'm going to click here and go to the quadrant. And I'm going to click here and go to this quadrant. And you click those two places. Are those lines to the, or sorry, the quadrants, to the tangent points at all? Um, they're not to the tangent points at all. So the only reason I'm showing you nearest is a couple people yesterday had nearest on. And it causes you trouble. Um, I will suggest leave nearest off because nine times out of ten, it's going to do things you don't want to do. And it's going to cause you more trouble than what it's going to help you. There'll be a very few times throughout the year I'll tell you to turn nearest on, but not very often at all. So for the most part, leave nearest off. One thing I always try to say is nearest is evil. Don't use nearest. Nearest is evil. Don't use nearest. All right. So now we got those first two done. Um, did another one here on the bottom. Just mirrored what was on the top from this quadrant to this quad. Or sorry, and I said quadrant. To this tangent point to the tangent point over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trim these things up. Um, I'm going to actually start with trimming this bottom one down here. And just kind of watch for a second. Once you start playing with the new trim command a little bit, and I've played a little bit, um, the new trim command is really pretty awesome. So on this one, if I just go TR for trim, if I click here and hold, draw a line across those circles there, come around that line, draw it there, and then cross that line, I get it all gone in one little swoop. So I'll do that again. If we go TR for trim, I can go like this. Oops, and there I kind of missed a little. I still got it. And trim it up like that. If you come in here, and if you're not really understanding the trim command, and I go here, and then here, and then here, and then here, I really kind of go, got to go zigzag back and forth a bunch to get that in there. It still works. You're just zigzagging a bunch of lines in there to try to trim that out. But if you get to where you know what the command does, if I trim those circles first, and then trim that middle one, it really goes out of there pretty quickly. So get that a try. I really don't care how you accomplish that. You can click on these things one at a time too, but I feel like that's a lot more time consuming. If you click and hold, you can draw that line and trim them out like that and it really goes pretty nice. All right. Same thing above. We're going to scroll this up a little bit. We're going to go trim here and trim out all those things up there. However, on this top one, since it's not to the tangent points, we do have these extra little chunks of arcs here. So I'm going to trim that one out there. I'm going to pan here a little bit and trim that one off there. So try to get those two things trimmed up like that, and that's great. Okay, and one small comment I want to make here. So I just meant, I mentioned that the trim and the offset command, and you're going to learn offset here in a little bit, are two commands you use most often. If AutoCAD was like Minecraft, it's not. But if AutoCAD was like Minecraft, Minecraft tracks everything you do. You do. I don't know if you knew this or not. It tracks how many times you jump. 
It tracks how many times you lay a block. It tracks how many ore blocks you've dug, how many iron ore blocks, how many um, dirt blocks you've dug, all those things. If AutoCAD would track that, I guarantee you that trim and offset would be the most two common commands that would be used times 10. Because once you learn them, you use them a bunch. So all I'm trying to share with that example or make is those are two very common commands. It's good for you to master those. Uh, all right. So looking at these two, this bottom one, when you look at it, you see the nice, beautiful transition between the arc and the line, how smooth a transition that is. That's awesome. You look at this side of it, again, between this arc and this line, a beautiful transition there. If you look at the top one, is that a beautiful transition? Not so much. Um, on this side, is that a beautiful transition? Not so much. If they don't miss, if they don't meet at all, you didn't follow directions real well, and you didn't get things trimmed off quite correctly. So they should definitely meet if you use the trim command. If they don't meet, you didn't follow directions and trim them out correctly. When I grade things, especially from here on forward, they've got to meet. If these lines don't meet, you're definitely going to be counted down on things. And if they aren't trimmed correctly, if they aren't tangent, those things are going to hurt you um, when it comes to grading later. All right. Let's go ahead and look at this next one. If you're still struggling with things not meeting correctly, let's look at that a little bit. Let's focus here on the screen. All right. So on this, we're going to do something different. We're going to go C for circle. We're going to use a TTR circle. So you're going to hit T, enter. So C, enter, T, enter. And our first tangent point, we're going to pick right in here on this quadrant of the circle. So this inside quadrant of the circle here is my first tangent point. And I'm just going to click. My second tangent point is going to be over here on this inside quadrant towards the inside of it, the top left, or sorry, yeah, top left quadrant. And now it asks you down below, what's the radius of the circle? Radius of my circle is going to be five. So I'm going to hit five and enter. Puts a very large circle out there like so. All right, next, we're going to do the mirror image of that on the other side. So we're going to repeat our circle command by hitting C, T for trim. Again, we're going to hit on this inside quadrant here. We're going to hit on this inside quadrant here. And the five is already saved down below. So all I have to do is just hit enter or space bar. And I'll put the exact same circle in on that side. All right. So for this, for trimming it, if you go TR for trim, um, TR enter. This way I do not suggest doing because it takes a lot of extra time. So if we do a TR for trim and trim all this and this and this, you got to trim so many extra things. It takes a long time to get that done. To get all those out of there. So that is not my suggestion. You can do it that way. But my suggestion is go TR for trim. Hit T for your cutting edge. Pick those and that circle for your cutting edges. Hit enter. And now trim out those. And trim out this. And it trims it very quickly and very easily. Alright, look here for a second. If you're struggling there, I'll help you in just one second with that. Alright, so next, what we're going to do. We're going to again use the circle command. So we're going to go C for circle. We're going to hit the TTR option again, so we're going to hit T. This time we're going to pick different tangent points. So we're going to come out here and pick this outside the top left quadrant on this circle. On this circle, the top right quadrant. And again, we're going to hit our 5-inch circle, so just hit Enter. Okay. I'll repeat that down below. Again, we're going to hit our tangent-tangent radius option, so we're going to hit C for circle, T for TTR. I'm going to pick this bottom left quadrant. I'm going to pick this bottom right quadrant of this circle. And again, the five inch circle. So we just hit space bar and accept that. And that's got those two circles in there like that. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and trim it up. I'm going to stop back and I'll do this again here in just a second. So I'm going to trim this up. On this one again, picking the cutting edges I think is very helpful. So I'm going to hit T for my cutting edges. Pick those and that. Enter. Now I'm just going to draw a line here across this end of it. Here. And here. And then my little horseshoe shape there. Oh, why didn't I turn? Oh, I missed picking that as the cutting edge. Let me try that again. There we go. And we can erase these off. I'll do all of that again for you now. All right, let's take a look at this next thing. Next, we're going to come over here to these two, um, or these four parallel lines. 
I'm going to do a couple different things to them here. First, we're going to play with the circle command a little bit on there. So I'm going to go C for circle. I'm going to go T. Or no, no. Sorry. I'm going to go 2P for a two-point circle. We did this once before when we did our snowman. So two-point circle. My first point I'm going to pick is going to be up here on the end of this line. So you need to make sure you have end point on your O-snap. So end of that line. I'm going to come straight across to the end of that line. And draw a circle just there. On this other end of it, we're going to again do the same thing. We're going to go C for circle, 2P for a two-point circle, enter, and draw from there to there. So that's what we're doing on the first pair of parallel lines. Oops, and I need to pause. Okay, from there, we're going to trim this up a little bit. So on this first one, we're going to go trim. Just going to trim out that bottom portion of the circle, so it's curved portion on the top. On the other one, I'm going to try about the bottom portion of it. So it's an arc going up. That's a very common little move that you do when you're doing a drawing. It makes these circles perfectly tangent or arcs perfectly tangent there. Uh, that's pretty common. Now here's another option. If you want to make this curved portion on this end, there's an easier way to do that. I've seen some of you play with this command. We haven't really used it much. But it's the fillet command. If I go F for fillet, so F, enter. If I pick two lines that are parallel to each other, watch what happens. So click on this one, click on this one, and it rounds over the end just like that. A much quicker, much easier way to do that. Now, it does it on what side of the line you're on. So for example, if I go F for fillet, if I pick down here on the bottom of the line, just watch and you'll see it the second time. If I pick on the bottom of the line, F, enter for fillet, click here and click here, it curves over the bottom of it. Repeat my fillet command, enter. And I'm going to pick this line here, the parallel line next to it there. And I round it over both ends of the line. Go ahead and do both ends of it so it looks like that. All right. So on this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go F for fillet. Now, when you go F for fillet, one thing we didn't just talk about is this. It says right here what your radius is. Currently, your radius should be set to zero. So radius zero. If you fillet two lines that are perpendicular to each other or or at angles to each other, notice what happens. So I'm going to fill up these two lines here. So out here towards the left end of this line, I'm going to click. Towards the top of this line, I'm going to click. And notice what it does. It made a perfect little corner out of that. We're going to go ahead and repeat this command. So there it trimmed off these two extra little parts of it with the fillet command set to zero. Now I'm going to hit space to repeat, repeat the fillet command. And I come down here to the bottom corner, I'm going to pick this line. Look at the screen so you can tell what line I'm picking. I'm going to pick the bottom of that same line I was just on. The left side of this line, and notice what it does. It brings those two corners together so they meet perfectly. So the fillet command will bring them together. That's a very quick, very easy way to make the ends of your lines meet perfectly. Very handy little command. All right, so now we're going to do fillet again. So we go F for fillet again. So F, enter. Now this time we want to change our radius. This is typically what the fillet command is used for, is putting a round on a corner. So fillet, we're going to go R, enter. So you go F, enter first to get into the fillet command. Now I'm going to hit the radius option. So we're going to hit R, enter. And I'm going to set the radius to 0.5. So I'm going to hit 0.5 and hit enter again. Now I get my little pick box back here again. I'm going to take this corner, this top, right corner. I'm going to click on the end of this line and the end of this line and notice what it does. It rounds it over nicely. I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to repeat my fillet command. Hit space bar to repeat it. It saves that 0.5 radius and I'm going to do the same thing to this bottom corner down here. And that's it. So Everything you do in CAD, there's multiple ways of doing it. Sometimes, for some reason, the fillet command just won't work. You can't use it. So there would be another way to round this corner. And we've done things similar to this already. And that is the circle command. So let's go C for circle. Then you're going to go the TTR option. We've used that one before. So you're going to hit T for TTR. T, enter. We're going to pick this line. You're going to hit this bottom line, and our radius is going to be 0.5. So it puts that circle in there like that, and then you just have to trim it up. So you're going to go TR, 
trim out that circle, trim out these two little pieces of the line, 